Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to be showing you how you can take a 3D printed prop and smoothing it out in preparation for painting. Hey everybody, Uncle Jesse here. In my previous video I showed you how I printed a Titanfall 2 car SMG that was provided by 3D Workbench. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing how I'm gonna take that same print and smooth it out in preparation for painting. Typically, that's gonna take a very long time, which would include a lot of things like Bondo or Spot Putty, lots and lots of sanding. But with the tool that I'm using today from SmoothOn called XTC 3D, this should make the process much, much easier. All right, so pretty much this is all that I'm gonna need for this step of the project. This is XTC 3D. If you're not familiar with this product, it's by SmoothOn. They create a lot of different mold making materials and tools that you can use. But this is specifically designed for 3D printed props or parts and smoothing them out. And again, it's really just gonna help take down the striation marks, I guess is the technical term. I'm not all that technical <laughs> as a lot of you might know. Uh, but it, again, just is really going to help smooth this out and allows you to then go down and further sand out if you need to or apply more of this product or again, you can apply some more spot putty. But again, it's going to help reduce that amount of time that it's going to take to get this smooth. So before I jump into pouring this out and painting it on here, what I'm going to do is disassemble the car SMG to get it ready to be painted. All right, so I've got everything disassembled here. I also have some extra smaller parts here that I'm gonna do separately. Uh, and the reason behind that is I have some other pieces here that I further need to sand off and get prepared to fit properly. I'm gonna save those actually till after this is pretty much well and good to go. Plus I'm not envisioning a whole lot of work being done on the smaller bits at the moment for this prop. So I'm gonna move these off to the side for the moment. Um, and what I have here is I've got my, uh, all the pieces that I'm going to coat, which is a lot of them. I have a whole lot of uh, aluminum foil set off to the side here that I'm going to put the pieces on after I coat them. I have this other piece of aluminum foil that I'm just going to make sort of like a little reservoir with. Uh, you could also use a plastic plate or paper plate type thing for this as well. Uh, this material here is an A and B from SmoothOn. You're going to do two parts A, one part B. So do some a little bit of math there and it'll go a long way. Here are my cups that I'm going to be using to mix this with. And then I've got some paint sticks, brushes as needed when I'm going through this that I'll be pulling from. The little soft sponge brushes that picked up from Harbor Freight. I think I got 50 of them for maybe... I don't know, six bucks, something like that. And then a whole bunch of these little stir sticks that I'll be using as well as needed. And I also have my gloves. Uh, the beauty of this, and I do mean beauty of this, is one of the things that I also oh appreciate about SmoothOn's product here with XTC 3D is that I'm in my house, in my basement. I have a window, one of these side windows open just a little bit here to help with the fumes, but this product here does not have a uh, very strong odor. So I can use it in my house. It's not gonna bother my family that's upstairs or anything like that. It's not gonna stink up the house as well. And I don't have to be oh so concerned about something like using Bondo or fiberglass, <laughs> that type of stuff in the house to actually strengthen and smooth out this particular product. So this is a great option. Plus, by the way, I think this is like 15 bucks. It's less than 20 bucks over on Amazon to order. And they have prime shipping on it as well. So I can get it in about two days when I run out of it. So I'm going to get this going here. So I'm going to take two parts A. And I'm just going to eyeball this at the moment. I have a lot of pieces that I need to coat. A lot, a little goes a very long way with this particular um, product here. So you don't need a ton. However, I do want to use a good amount because I don't want to have to, excuse me, refill this along the way. So there's, I've got a little line indicator here. Let me go up just a little bit more. 
Whew. Taco Tuesday, am I right? It's not actually Tuesday when I'm filming this, but, you know. Uh, so it's about a little over halfway to the first line on this cup. So I'm going to take this, shake it vigorously. Part A, you don't have to shake up. Part B, you do want to make sure you shake up. Very scientific here, eyeballing it. And I need a little bit more of A. A is very thick and B is much more liquid. Okay, I've got about half and half. Now what I'm gonna do is uh, mix these together. So I would have, maybe I don't need the third cup, I'm just gonna pour this into the other and mix these up and then quickly pour it onto the aluminum foil and spread it out. The thicker you leave this, like if I left this in the cup here, the faster it's going to cure. And by cure, I mean harden. And I wanna make sure that I have enough time to paint on as much of this as I can before it gets extremely tacky and thick, which won't be a lot of time, maybe five to 10 minutes. So spread this out a bit. Make sure I get as much of it as I can out. Stick this off to the side here. And let's take our first piece and coat it on. So I'm just gonna take my brush, not too much, and begin brushing it on to my first piece here. Making sure to coat all of the edges here that will be visible. And again, I'm gonna try and move relatively quickly on this. So there's the first piece. Let's go for some of the larger parts first. Again, you want to make sure to go, it, it really a thin, a thin coating will do wonders for you. You don't want to go too thick on this initial coating because you don't want to lose any of the fine details that you might have in your print. Uh, if you don't have or can't get access to XTC 3D, you can also use um, epoxy. This is basically a two-part epoxy you can pick up at art stores, art supply stores. People use this to put over their paintings or different projects that they might be working on. And it gives it a nice glossy coat. Um, we will not be leaving it with a glossy coat because I will still be sanding it afterwards, which will give it a little bit more of a dull finish, but that's okay because I'm going to be painting it and priming it for painting after. Another nice benefit of this is it's gonna help strengthen this as well. So it's gonna help make it much more rigid and firm once this is applied. All right, so here are all the pieces. They are finally coated and ready to go. I can let this sit here and air dry. This might take up to six to 12 hours to completely air dry or maybe even longer, all depending on how much I've applied on each of the pieces here. Also, you can apply some direct heat to it to help cure it much faster. So what I'm gonna do is take a space heater and set it relatively close to the parts here, but not too close where they're gonna melt to help assist in the drying and curing process. All right, so after about six hours, here is a look at some of the finished prints. They are nice and smooth now, very smooth, where we've applied the XTC 3D. Uh, the line marks, you're not really able to feel those whatsoever with your hands. I still need to go over these with some sandpaper to continue to smooth out some of the rough edges and seams here, but it's gonna be much, much less work than I would have had to previously have done or the work that I would have had to apply to this with something like Bondo or spot filler or even wood glue at this point. 
This just really helps simplify the process of smoothing out your prints, and I highly, highly recommend this. In the next video, I'm gonna be covering probably filling some of the gaps that I have in the parts. So you'll see here in some of the places where I've glued it together, there are still large openings. This product, XCC3D, will not help with that portion. I will have to use some sort of filler to actually fill in those portions. So in the next video, I'll be covering that with you guys and hopefully moving on to the getting close to the sanding and painting portion of this project. All right, hey, thanks again for watching you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the videos. If you have, make sure to hit the like button, leave me some comments down below as well. Always love hearing your guys' feedback and make sure to hit me up over on Twitter or Instagram or any of those fun places. But hey, thanks again for watching you guys and I'll see you next time, bye now. Oh, 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 I also just hit 13,000 subscribers, so thank you guys very much for that. If you're interested, I have a giveaway going on right now. You can check out the description down below, assuming it's still active and this isn't, you know, six months, a year after this video was released.